This video is about projections and working with data in different projections in R. Now, so far, we've worked with raster data and vector data separately um, using the STARS package for raster data and the SF package for vector data. So today, let's go ahead and start working with them together. First, let's load all of our key packages. So we'll run library to load the stars package for working with the raster data. And then another line to load the FS package for working with vector data. And then one final library call to load the ggplot2 package uh, so that we can graph the results that we get out. Remember uh, that for raster data, we read it in using read stars. So we'll go ahead and recreate the raster data layer that we've already worked with. So that's DTM, our digital terrain model or elevation at Harvard Forest, and assign it the output from read underscore stars. And our data is in the data subdirectory, the harv subdirectory, uh, and then it's this harv dtm crop.tiff file. Remember, we can plot this using geom stars. So we can say ggplot plus geom underscore stars. Data is equal to dtm harv. And we'll get out after just a second, uh, that raster plot that we've had before showing elevation. We can also load our vector data. Again, I'm going to load all of the data together, group it together in the code where I know where it is, and we'll load those plots uh, that we saw uh, in the last lesson. So we'll call this plots underscore harv and we read in vector data using st underscore read. And then again, the data is in the data directory, the harv directory, and then it's the harv underscore plots dot shp for shapefile. And remember, we can graph it on its own uh, by using ggplot plus, and now it's geom sf because this is vector data from the SF package. Geom SF data is equal to plots underscore harv. So this is where we've gotten to up to this point. We can load raster data and graph it. We can load vector data and graph it. Now let's put them together so that we have our plots on top of our raster. And so we'll do that using a single ggplot command. So we'll start with ggplot. Uh, again, empty because we're going to add these separate spatial layers from separate sources. And so then we can add our geom stars first because we want that raster layer to be on the bottom because it's everywhere. And then we'll just put the few points on top of it. Uh, so we'll say geom stars where data is equal to DTM harv. And then on top of that, we want to add our vector data, geomsf, data is equal to plots underscore harv. Okay. And if we run this, uh, we should get out this combination of the two things uh, that we've been working with. But that's not what I was expecting anyways. Uh, we kind of seem to have maybe like one point here. There's no raster, but uh, there's some uh, a raster color ramp. So what's going on? The reason this graph doesn't work is that the two data sets have different projections. And we can see this by going back and looking at the original plots. If we go back one by pressing this arrow 
to our vector data, we can see that it's plotted uh, with latitude and longitude uh, coordinates on the x and y axis. So they're in the 40 to 70 range. But if we go back to our raster plot, we'll see something very different, right? These numbers are in the hundreds of thousands uh, or the millions. And so when we try to plot them together, they're very far apart. And we get a graph that we almost can't even begin to interpret. And these differences are because the two sets of data have different coordinate reference systems or projections. So what does that mean? Since the Earth is round, it's effectively a ball, when we're going to present it as a flat map, we have to stretch that ball out in some way. And there's no single best way to do this. And so there are a variety of different projections which result in different representations of the world and different units for the locations of the same thing. And here are some examples of some common projections. Uh, and we can see that uh, for the United States, each different projection produces a different shaped uh, version of the US. And these include a couple of the uh, most common projections, uh, including the ones we'll be working with today, uh, UTM uh, up in the top right, and WGS84, which is basically latitude and longitude, uh, down here in the bottom right. And so the coordinate reference system, or CRS for short, indicates uh, which one of these, what approach is used to flattening out uh, the curved surface of the Earth. And we can look at the coordinate reference systems for the two objects that we have using a command called st underscore crs, which will look up the coordinate reference system for both SF and STARS objects. And so if we look at the coordinate reference system for our uh, raster data, so str, st underscore crs, and then the argument is dtm underscore harv, we'll see uh, a whole bunch of information. Uh, but right at the top, we'll see that the projection is WGS84, uh, UTM zone 18 north. And so this is uh, our projection here, is that this is a UTM uh, with this particular zone. And we'll talk about UTM zones uh, in a minute. And if we run the same command, st underscore crs, on plots underscore harv to look up its coordinate reference system, we'll see something different, which is that it is just WGS84. And so that's the equivalent of latitude and longitude. So the question then becomes, how do we work with spatial data that comes in different projections. And the general answer to that is that we transform all of the spatial data that we're working with into a single projection so that it's all represented in space in the same way. And we can do this using the sttransform function. This function takes two arguments, the geospatial object that we're going to transform and the coordinate reference system that we want to transform it into. And there are a variety of different ways to indicate a coordinate reference system, including numeric codes, 
uh, for the coordinate reference system. In fact, we can see down here uh, the number 4326 is the numeric code for this latitude-longitude uh, coordinate reference system. And there are also well-known text representations. That's what WKT stands for here. Uh, and so uh, this entire chunk of text here is the WKT uh, representation uh, of this coordinate reference system. And so we can use those to do transformations. And so let's say we wanted to take our raster data and convert it into the latitude longitude coordinate reference system. We could call this DTM harv lat long. And then we would run this st underscore transform function. And remember, it takes two arguments, the object we want to transform, in this case, dtm underscore harv, and then the coordinate reference system, which we could provide it in this case by giving it this numeric code, 4326. And now if I run st underscore crs on dtm underscore harv underscore lat underscore long to look up its coordinate reference system. We'll see that it is uh, this new coordinate reference system, 4326 WGS84. And so we've converted it from that uh, previous coordinate reference system with UTMs uh, to this lat long coordinate reference system. And we can manually choose uh, the coordinate reference systems that we want to work with for all of our objects. There's good reasons to do that sometimes. Often, the easiest thing to do uh, when combining geospatial data is to match all of the objects to one of the existing coordinate reference systems. And we can do this by running STCRS on the object whose coordinate reference system you want to match. And so for us, let's transform our plots data to have the same coordinate reference system as our vector data. And so let's call this plots harv utm. We'll assign it the output of st underscore transform that first argument is the spatial object that we want to transform. So that's plots underscore harv. And now instead of providing a specific numeric value or well-known text representation here, for the transformation for the CRS that we want to work with, let's say st underscore CRS parentheses DTM Harve. And so what this is going to do is it's going to look up the coordinate reference system for our raster and then transform our plot data to have that same coordinate reference system so we should be able to work with them together. We'll run that. So now we have two objects that should have the same coordinate reference system we should be able to make the plot that we wanted to in the first place. And so we'll say ggplot plus, we'll plot our raster in its original projection, geom stars data is equal to dtm underscore harv. But now to add to that, we're going to add our reprojected plot data. And so we'll do that using geom underscore sf, and data is equal to plots underscore harv underscore utm, the ones that are in that same utm projection. And now, hopefully we'll get back the graph that we were looking for in the first place, and we do. We now have a map that combines our raster data on elevation uh, and the plot data that we had before. So 
We've now worked with a couple of the most common coordinate reference systems, WGS84 or Latlong and UTMs. The question then becomes, what is the best coordinate reference system to work with for a particular project? And the answer is there is no best single coordinate reference system because as we talked about at the beginning, when we're flattening a sphere, there is no projection that's perfect for all circumstances. That said, UTM, which stands for Universal Transverse Mercator, is one of the most commonly used and most appropriate transformations for a lot of ecological research. It accurately represents local geospatial information and it preserves distance. Uh, so the distance between points or along a transect is the same uh, no matter where you are on your map. And it's primarily designed to work within different zones. And so here are the UTM zones uh, for the United States. There are 19 of them in total. We've been working with this one here, uh, UTM zone 18, because Harvard Forest is in the northeast. And in general, as long as your research area falls within a UTM zone, choosing that UTM zone uh, is an excellent general choice uh, for your work. However, because UTM is primarily designed to work within zones, it's not a particularly good choice for research uh, that covers very large spatial scales like the continental scale research uh, that, that my group does. And in that case, uh, it's important to sort of think about what aspects of the world you want to preserve. And so there are transformations that preserve distance between points. There are transformations that preserve area. So if we were gonna look at the effect of spatial scale, on something at large scales, we would want an area preserving transformation and so on. And then of course, lat longs, while they are a common way and useful way of collecting data, uh, they don't tend to preserve any of the key aspects uh, of data uh, relative to the real world physical distances or physical areas. Uh, and so they're often not a particularly good choice for analysis. So for most of you, uh, the UTM zone within your research area will be the right way to go. And if you work at larger scales, uh, think about the things that you want to preserve and investigate projections like the azimuthal equal area projection or something that preserves distance or whatever is most important to you. So that's the basic idea behind projections. In order to represent geospatial information from the surface of the sphere like Earth, we have to find some way to make it flat. And we do this using projections uh, that are represented as coordinate reference systems or CRS for short. We can use the ST transform function to transform data from one coordinate reference system to another. And this is often necessary and important when working with multiple uh, geographical objects. Though it is worth noting that in some cases, the geospatial tools will quietly handle that transformation for you in the background. Uh, and in general, UTM within the appropriate local zone uh, is the most common coordinate reference system used for most ecological research. And if I run this, uh, the transformation will run. And we could then plot ggplot geome underscore stars data is equal to dtm underscore harv underscore lat long. So now we're going to look at this in a different projection. And after it finishes running for just a second, uh, we should see uh, a different version of this graph over here on the right.
do 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 do